only thing we want is to have our freedom. They say the, the America is free. <laughs> It was exciting to come to Uniontown. It was a lot of things to do back in the days. Everybody knew everybody, and it was like fun times. It was a town. Now it's like a ghost town. Uniontown used to be a very prosperous town. And in the beginning, it was a very rich soil, good crops, healthy animals, I don't know what is happening, but over the period of years, I've lost a tremendous number of cattle over the last few years. The Black Warrior River keepers did a water sample test, and the sample that they took, they could not get a reading because the bacteria level was so high, they had to dilute what they took in order to get a reading. So it just gives you an idea how contaminated the water is in Uniontown. We thank you for the blessings of this day. We pray your peace and we pray your love among us. Lord, live real and big in us is our prayer. Amen. Amen. You know, water is something that we all, you know, it's just a natural product that we all enjoy using it. So it shouldn't be that hard to give our people clean water to use. So I want for you to get the water sample early morning. The first thing from your kitchen faucet in the morning. Okay, and fill it out like up to here for me. We want to study in this area and we want to tell them if it's safe or not. It's their right to know if living in the, this area is safe for themselves or not. <laughs> Millions of tons of coal ash and sludge came pouring out when a dike at a coal plant gave way this week. But it's what's in that sludge and its potential long-term health effects that is causing the greatest worry tonight. The disaster happened up in Kingston, Tennessee. And then fast forward to 2009, we started to see the coal ash being dumped in. Coal ash came into the community, it started impacting residents. And slowly but surely, we started to see Uniontown become a dumping ground. Uh, to my, my judgment, the landfill about 500 feet to the, from where I'm standing. It's a pretty unfortunate situation, but it's environmental injustice going on. Um, oftentimes, poor minority towns are chosen because they're probably going to be the least likely to fight back. So a lot of times these big landfills and other polluting operations are put in these places for that reason. I have an opportunity to see the internal workings of this landfill, and I can assure you it is a top-notch, first-rate operation, and there is absolutely no environmental danger created by this landfill. This is a landfill that is best suited to particular events, whether it be a coal ash spill, a coal ash disposal, whatever it might be. If there's a large event that requires waste to be removed, that's the kind of event that this landfill is suited for. This area right in through here and back all the way out here, this is the area where the coal ash was disposed of. And that area has been closed. What that means is that it has been capped, uh, more, I guess, sealed is the right way to put it. Well, early monitoring around the landfill showed elevated arsenic, heavy metals, and other contaminants of concern. And a lot of those discharges were supposedly officially not happening, but they were documented and showed that there was very real harm coming from the site. The area close to coal ash, we see more Alzheimer's diseases, more Parkinson's diseases, more cancers. So there are relationship between exposure to coal ash, which contains particulate matters and also the heavy metals in it. 
this is like three years ago. I kind of like thought I was having a stroke because it kind of like started in my hand. Then I went to the emergency room and they kind of like did a test and they like put my arm in a sling for like two weeks. Then it kind of like got worse, you know, and then it went to my leg. You know, my leg feel like it's just burning. But I ended up going to the neurologist and he said, yeah, you got it in that leg and you also got it in this leg. And I was like, my goodness, neuropathy. I was like, dang, I got, I got damaged nerves. And I'm like, where I get this from? And the landfill is only a small part of that story. And in 2013, what we learned is that the spray fields over here were about to expand. We don't have a mechanical treatment plant. We have what they call a lagoon. So all the wastewater leaves the homes, goes to the lagoon. The lagoon carries it through its cycle, and once it goes through that cycle, it's pumped out to the spray field. The spray field has sprinklers that sprinkle a half a million gallons of water a day onto the top of the ground. So you have a buildup of bacteria on top of the soil till it runs off into a creek and the creek carries it to somewhere else. They start spraying it up in the air and coming back down, but it's not soaking into the soil. And uh, you, you can see it look like a lake out there. All that is contaminated. For its size, Uniontown is dealing with some terrible issues like the cheese plant produces a very potent wastewater that stinks unlike anything else I've ever smelled. And what it stinks like just depends on where you are and which way the wind's blowing. I mean, you can't get away from a stench. I mean, it's even coming into people's homes. It smells like dog poop. It stinks. Yeah, I need to do something about it. And you don't know what the smell is doing to your lung. Suppose you want to work in your garden. You can't do it because that smell and the wind blows. That's, I mean, what's different? Prison. They put that there knowing that that was a, a segregated area. That's why they put it there. And you see people want to leave. There's not too many people I know that live here that want to stay here. Everybody wants to move somewhere else. They want to send their children somewhere else. They don't want their children growing up here. But where are you going to go? You can't sell your property. Who's going to buy it? Who wants to live there? We just, we had a pickle, and we're not getting a whole lot of help. Our city officials never consider the citizens. I have tried to get on the city council agenda to address transparency, but I'm always shot down and denied because transparency is nothing that needs to be discussed. It's what I, I've been told. I don't even understand why they have a council meeting. Why you have those meetings when the people can't speak? They don't even know they do this. You need to have people there who are qualified to do a job. And if you're gonna have a mayor, have the mayor who is qualified to better serve the people and his constituents. Over the last 20, 30 years, it changed a lot. A lot of the older people died off, the children sold off the land. Now, as far as the industry, they diminished, they moved out, they shut down. And when our children finish high school, it's almost like they cannot wait to move away, to go to a larger city. And when that happens, they very seldom come back. So I want to spread hope to people here, particularly our young people 
and say, yes, you can come back home. Everybody can't leave. We work really hard to get what we get. And then we get thrown on the bus. We're, I'm sick and tired of being thrown on the bus. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. But you know I'm not gonna fight with my hand, I'm not gonna fight with a gun. I'm gonna continue to talk and speak, speak out for other people. You know, I'm working with the community, I'm working with people. I gotta concentrate on doing what I do each and every day. And I think I give the world more than I give myself.